You can see my screen? Yes, we can. Is it clear? Okay, yes, great. Please. Yes, we can. Yeah. So to continue on today, we'll pick it up from uh, understanding which roles everybody plays in the change, yeah? because everybody has a, a role to play. And if you play our roles well, whether you are a leader or you are middle level manager or you are a frontline employee, is how the change is going to succeed. So allow me to just pause my video. Again, I'm getting connectivity problems. All right. So uh, depending on what role you play in the organization, you have a role to play. And this is mostly to do with dealing with each other, people management, and also the process management. So I'll start with the leader's role in managing change. That's the biggest role we have so far. And because you are leaders, I'll start with you and just take you through what are your main roles. So I will discuss everything now. Of course, there's a lot more to discuss, but I guess we just capture the main items. Your first role as a leader is to role model the change. Sorry, just going back. It will start by the first step of quarter that I was saying earlier was articulating an agency for change. You know, you're not telling everybody we are changing and why we are changing, convincing them that we have to leave this place that we are to go to a better place. You must give the data current about why and how and what we want to do about that. That is the first thing. It has to do with people and the process. Unless you get through this step very, very well, then maybe your change will not go as well as you had planned. So the first thing is to make everybody come on board on the change and accept the change. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, selecting a very strong change coalition team or a committee to spearhead your change. As I was saying earlier, you pick people in the in company who are able to understand why we are changing, those who buy in the change, who understand the industry, understand your organization, understand how they can uh, plan ahead with everybody else. So the people you put in that committee must be reporting to you directly on a daily basis, give reports on the progress, and update you on what they have achieved so far. So the people you put together in that team must be very accountable of the change, and they're the ones you're depending on to successfully see this change through. So those first two are very, very critical for you as a leader as you start with the change. And then thirdly, of course, have a convincing change vision that we all did very well uh, in your own case studies. You have to compel them, you have to convince them that we are heading to a better place and this change must always have them. It benefits them, benefits a company in the long run, you know, in the next one year. So those three are number one and two and three in that order should be done very, very well. Then fourthly, you must communicate continuously. It never stops. From start to end, as we said about people that are the ones who prevent the change, is communicating, updating, and also listening to people. You know, sometimes as we are leading people, we always think about us talking, you know, telling them, but you must listen. It's a two way because you'll tell them what you're doing, update them, and then ask any questions any concerns and listen because there are also people and they're in different places of understanding or adapting the change. So always have a way of listening to them. Very, very key here. And then of course, once you listen to what they're asking for, you respond back. And timely response is very, very important. And it's here involved because communicating is something that has always led to failure of some change in some companies. So it's not well done continuously, it will not work very well. And then moving on, Provide an appropriate change model to implement, like how we have discussed quarter, the others are ADCA. So look at what is available in the market and see what can adapt easily to your and what goes well with the people and the process. Okay? And there's more. Identify the barriers that come along the way. You'll find barriers along the way as you do a change. No change is easy. No change is smooth enough to go without any barriers or any obstacles. So as you see them, deal with them. They can be with people, you know, understanding well, or maybe just resisting change, or the culture is not uh, allowing you to move on. Some cuts can be very, very rigid. So you have to think about, is our culture allowing us to move on? Is it holding us back? Are our values too stringent? What can we change? Because maybe some cultures that you've had for a long time in the company can hold you back. Even structure, you know, the structure of the company, the hierarchy, how you have the hierarchy of the organization. This one does this, reports to this person. Is it an obstacle to you? 
If it is, there is nothing that is on, on cast on stone, change it, organize it. And if you don't take care of these barriers, the beginning here, you'll find they'll always be there. So the earlier you can deal with them, the better for you. All these barriers to do with people, the process, the culture, the structure, you know, strategy also, all those things that are, can be a barrier. Okay. And there's more for leaders because they're the big people here. Uh, one of the biggest things here about leaders is about modeling, role modeling. It's not about what you're saying that should be done. It's about how are you adapting? Are you walking the talk in your behavior? You must role model this change in what you do and what you say and how you behave consistently. If you say we are heading east, we are all going east. If you are saying we are going to be wearing masks throughout the office because of COVID, you must have your mask on. If you say we must come to work by eight o'clock and leave by six because we're trying to do some changes, be the one to show the way. So spearhead by example. Leaders sometimes just talk. Yeah, we all do of that, yes. We say we must, you have a policy there, but sometimes we just go off because we think it's not for us, but it's how you model, how you show the way that matters also. Leaders must motivate, encourage, and also do word those who are adapting and have done some good things in the change process. Again, people here, change is hard. People don't take change very easily. Some take it very slow. So motivate them, encourage them. You know, find ways, find your own unique way that works for you in your organization that can help people motivate and feel hopeful that this change is possible and they are part of it and they matter in the change because sometimes we forget about people and think about the process, the system. But if you show them you're part of this and we appreciate what you're doing and you can go along with it well, then they'll be encouraged and you'll be successful in your change. And of course, as a leader, you must take risks. Leaders are risk takers, you know, unless you take a risk, be bold enough to take that risk of that change, then not much will happen. Because sometimes we, we always think about what if something does not happen, does not go well. But from the very, very onset, if you say this is how the change is going to be, because it's going to help us survive, have a market share, or maybe grow, if you're convinced that this is what you need to do, then take that risk and believe in it and go for it. That is one thing as a leader you must do. Have courage. Do not relent. Very, very important here. And also support the, the team that you have put together, you know. The team you put together for the coalition, they must be able to get things for me like data, if they want data, access some information you have for them, they require some resources, like maybe money, capital resources, or a place where they can work easily. So support them because they're the ones who are spearheading the process. Unless they have your support as a leader, they will yes, be very... Sorry. Hello? Was there a question? We can't hear you. You can't hear me. Um, now? Now? Is it my Wi-Fi? I can actually hear you, Nancy. Uh, so I, I'm not so sure where the problem is. I've put loud volume. <laughs> Hello? Yes, now Am I can hear you. We could hear you for the... OK. OK, where was the last thing you had, the last point you had me saying, so I can go back? Which point on the screen? Motivation. Motivation, okay. Yeah, so motivation is about how you can motivate the team to continue working towards a change because uh, as people, human beings, sometimes we lose it, we get a bit discouraged, we can't see ourselves in the process. So as a leader, it's good to encourage them and motivate them to feel a part of this change and even reward them with the progress they have made, no matter how small or how big. And sometimes not just about rewarding maybe with uh, man, money or whatever it is, even just a thank you or just, you know, doing a letter or saying these four guys have done very well in their area and just appreciating them in front of everybody else. It's a good thing. So find a way of motivating the people as they continue on. Are we together? We're together, we can hear each other. Hello? Are we yes, there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, if you can't let me know. 
Okay, moving on. Again, I was saying that leaders are risk takers. They must take bold risks that are very, very well calculated because change is about taking risks. You're going to a different place you've never been before. Mm -hmm. It may work well the way you're saying or not, but you must take that risk because you are convinced that because it is where you want to go, you want to get market share, you want to grow your revenue, unless you take that bold step of changing towards that direction, you will not survive. So do not relent back and think of maybe not now, maybe next year. Mm -hmm. If you're convinced it is time to change, you take it then and you move with it. Do not go back, all right? And then also the change team you have put together, the change coalition, they should have your support in terms of maybe information or data you can have, they require to have or resources. So whatever they require from you as a leader, give them access because unless they are supported by you, they will not spearhead the change very, very clear, very well. And they must also be able to uh, come back to you and give you feedback of what they have done so far, what are their challenges and support them in whatever way they require your support, okay? As a leader, release the, the resources that are required for the change. You require capital, you require to hire people, technology to be assessed. So all those that are required to make the change work, the resources, whatever they are, mm -hmm. make sure they're available at the right time to the right people in the right manner. Because they require to have them to move on. If it's money to buy things, equipment, or to hire expertise, even consultants, not just employees, do them with the right time in this, the fastest way possible, all right? And then lastly, I talk about dealing with the sense to change. Have a plan of how you can deal with people as you go through. You'll find barriers, change resistance, you'll find other issues about them. So plan ahead and expect that this change will not go as smoothly. If people don't understand the change very, very well, or they're resisting, how do you deal with that? These are the key areas that uh, I want to point out about leaders and the role that they can play in managing change, but they are more than this. There's so much more, okay? Are we together? Yes. Okay. So there's more yes. things as we, as we go along. You'll find some more roles as a leader. Maybe you have come across more you can add to the list, but uh, it's the longest, the biggest role, of course, as you can see, all right? Let us see other roles of other people. Let us see the roles of middle managers who have been ones who report the, the, the CEO or top management. They also have their roles to play that complement the leadership and also the people, the processes. So here I'll say that if you're a middle level leader or you're a supervisor in the departments, the first thing and the most critical thing for you is communication. Communicating all the aspects of the project with the employees, all the areas of the, of the change. You must always tell them what you're doing, update them on what has happened so far, yeah? So communicating you'll see in every level, from the top leader to the middle level, you'll always have to communicate back. Talk and listen. As a leader in that area, you also have to be as a coach and a guide to direct the employees on how they're learning, understand them how they're going along. If they have been trained or they're going through training, support the training mechanisms and review and refresh what they have learned, for example. Let's say you have an ICT system that has been launched in a software system. They have gone to training, but coach them, understand. Ask them, are you okay? Can we help you? What is not clear? So coach, guide, and direct them at every step throughout to the end. This never stops. So communicating and guiding and coaching at every step for everyone, the change process will be continuous. And thirdly, and very, very important here is to be open to feedback. As you communicate to them, you listen to them because there'll be a lot to be said because you have said, you have caught them, ask them questions, ask them what is it that they want us to see. If possible, have a, a box where they can put suggestions or questions because they could be having very many of them and they want you to listen to them in different ways. Some can't come to you. Some want to just write in a box. So have a box everywhere, a comment box around the company, and then open up and listen, listen and, and listen to what they're asking you. Or ask a survey, make a survey and ask things like, what do you think is challenging about the change? What are you finding difficult about the change? Is there anything you can do better to help you understand and how to work in the, in the change? So find ways of getting as much feedback from them as possible to answer the queries early enough 
even to clear the barriers along the way to continue swiftly without delay and also have everybody at the same same level of change because there's some who are faster than others, some are slower than others. And once you get the feedback, the questions, respond to them quickly. Please do not delay. Don't remain quiet and they are waiting for feedback. If you can't feedback, if you can't respond quickly, you can consult the team that has been put together, the committee that is heading coalition, ask them how they can help you or even the top leader can maybe assist in the feedback, get the queries done by them. So it's a continuous loop of communicating, listening, supporting, coaching, directing, yeah? And this does not stop until after the process has been finished, until you have come to the new level of number eight where you have now established a new system. And even after that, you must review, consult, encourage, coach, listen, feedback, and even supporting the top leadership. Okay, are we together? Yeah. yeah. Any questions so far on the first two roles of leader and senior That's manager? Yes. yes. I, have a, I have a question. Yes. Um, like for for the feedback, feedback suggestion box. Yes. Um. If you, you or Purity, if you can share how effective is that option, because we usually see them here in Rwanda in uh, public institutions or these uh -huh. big um, private companies. Yeah. But you find that it's just there for the sake of being there. Uh -huh. And when you do those feedback forms or anything, Uh, okay. Just okay. All right. Uh, what I'll say about these boxes is a good option if you have a big number, a large number of staff that spread across the company in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes my experience has been this because where I worked before, we had a big company with different departments. We have outsourced um, employees, we have senior managers, and sometimes even having meetings to them face to face became very difficult. Have those kind of yeah. Some would just want to get something and throw it inside there. So you allow both both avenues. Those who can speak up can speak to you. Of course, say I'm open to discussions. I'm open. Mouth is open. Yeah, come to mouth and ask me. It's open door. But for those who cannot reach you for any reason, they can drop in something and they can drop a, a small, you know, a small comment or even the survey that you have given them now and then, they can send to you. So depending on how the structure of your company is, if you're a small team, it's okay, you can have a meeting. You can you know, interact easily. Yes. But when you have a large spread out number of staff in different offices, different floors, and you can't come together every time, it's faster to have a point of communication or feedback. Uh, uh, yeah. Nancy, can I add in something? Yes. Uh, also, my own experience is that you have to earn the confidence of your employees. Once you decide to go the, the suggestion box way, uh, this I mean like uh, if any issue was raised through the suggestion box, then it becomes addressed. Because from time to time, you'll, you'll find requests or questions or suggestions are just sent on your on your suggestion box and no action is taken, then it loses the confidence of employees that these 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 questions, queries are reaching the right people. The other way is also maintain uh what is it called? Um, it's not confidentiality. What is it called? There is another issue that raises through suggestion box. Uh what is it? I had it just a minute ago. Sorry. <laughs> when I remember, I'll let you know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like it was so clear in my head. Uh, I that, okay. that you are able, like oh, oh, also, uh, you do uh, you also need like SOPs, like SOPs to mean if an issue is raised, how how much time does it require to get a response? You know, 
it could be two weeks, it could be two days, three days, such that people are confident. Like if we put a question on the suggestion box, we are, we are due to get feedback within maybe like two days or two weeks, whichever SOP you normally work with. Yes. Mm, yeah. What I would add here, I'd say that for this particular thing, mm -hmm. call it a, a comment box for the change. Don't make it don't make it very open for anything. Yes, it's strictly for the change feedback because if you open it for everything, you'll find all kinds of things going in that are not part of the change. Mm -hmm. It's to do with the change, and also tell them once you do that, uh, once you push your comment down, let us know which area you belong to, which department you belong to. So as you're having a meeting next time for that department, it can be brought up as a response. So mainly for the change, not for everything else. That works, I've seen that working very, very well for a big place where we have people who don't want to talk. Yes. Access you, that can work. But if you can have face-to-face -face talking feedback, it's the best thing. Have we answered your question? You. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Any more remarks or comments or questions in regarding to the first two? Okay, let's continue. The last step now is on the... Yes, none, good. The last cadre of employees here are discussed are the frontline employees or the ones you call the hands-on, you know, the ones who are below the supervisors, the ones who are below middle managers, the ones who do the real thing, eh? the real work. They also have a very big role to play. They should not be left out. So first of all, the biggest role to find is to seek clarity on the reasons for change and how the change will affect them and improve or affect their roles. They must always talk back. They must seek understanding. They must not be fearful before they take on any change, before they start. Are they clear about it? Do they understand why, what, and where? Everything about the change, they have that role. And they can ask questions. They can uh, consult the managers. Again, they can use a comment box, yeah, but be clear in whatever way they're using. Secondly, communicate. It never stops both ways. Speak out on what bothers you or makes you happy, or even just saying what you think can be improved in your area or in your role as you adapt the change. Because sometimes uh, your boss will see something different on from where they are, but you who's doing the work can suggest other ways of doing that new thing, this new role, you know, uh, because you're the one who does a job very well. So always speak up. You have a role, you can, you be, use your voice and speak up. Thirdly, as a frontline employee, support the change process, yeah? Remain positive because your leaders know where they're taking you, trust what they're doing. Because sometimes we know they don't trust leaders, but if they have thought through this, they have hired people to come and consult, they spend money to plan this change, trust them, trust in them. The future in the company will not be guaranteed because as a change person, you must see yourself in a new vision. So if you're fighting the change, you're fighting your own self. You're fighting your own uh, position, your own future in the company. And then next I'll say, whatever role you're playing, play it well, effectively, okay? Adapt, apply yourself fully, learn where you must learn, not just in the training as you're going to be given in what you must learn in the new role. So adapt easily, apply yourself. Again, here, if you're not sure about what you're doing is correct, consult, clarity, but don't work and be unhappy and supportive and you have something in your hair, in your mind. Speak out, because unless you do your role well, somebody somewhere will not do their role well. It affects somebody else somewhere else, All right? And then lastly, I'd say, yeah, volunteer in the process, okay? Sometimes that we ask to volunteer and help do something with the leader. Volunteer to be in a team leadership, to coach, to model, yeah? Or support others. If you feel you can do that, please volunteer because it's for the good of all, that it works for your colleagues as well. Don't sit back with your gifting of, of uh, you know, if you're a good role model, you're a good communicator, you cannot work. Do not, do not sit back, volunteer in the process. Mm -hmm. These are the five highlights of how the frontline employees can work well and help with the change. I'm sure you'll find others and there are more, but these are the main key areas. Okay, any question or comment on the frontline employees and their roles? Anything? 
Yes. Yes. Request number three. Yes. Where an employee is required to support the change process. Yes. And remain positive. Yeah. Uh, remember, in the first place, he seeks to understand or for clarity of the reasons mm -hmm. for the change. Now, what if he's not in agreement with the change, or even the change is not in his department? It's not or even the interest, one of those things, you know. How how easily can an HR like me mm -hmm. push the, the employee to support the change process? Okay, very good question. Now here we are, we are, we are assuming that uh, maybe the HR or the, the leader has done the vision very well clearly, very well communicated. They understood why they are changing and for what benefit they are changing for. And they have bought the agency for the change. Yeah? Remember the first three, four steps for the quarter? Yes. Yeah, so once they have understood, and even number one here, they have, they have clarified the reasons why they are changing in that department or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And they have no other queries They've expressed themselves, they have spoken out about what bothers them and what is making them happy. Once they have cleared any doubt in their mind, they can support the change. If something goes wrong in support the change, it means something is not clear because I'm assuming here they have bought the vision, they have been discussed very well, and the thing now remaining is for them to implement the change and trust in the process and trust it's in the right direction and trust you as a leader that you know where you leave the company because they know you for a long time. They've seen how you have grown together. They have been here for a long time and they have seen how you have been reliable. So they must trust you as a leader to lead them to the right direction. So this is for them to support the change, the process. If they have something they're not clear about, they can go back and clarify. But as a HR manager here, what you're asking for, is ensure they have been clearly understood. They understood the entire process of change. Then only can they buy into the change. If they have not, ask them, is there another problem? Is there an issue? What is it? How can we help you? And we'll discuss that later on how we can manage, uh, manage research and change because it's, it's a very big discussion. But this is very, very common. But before you go ahead, ask them, is there anything else you want to understand? Is there a problem? Uh -huh. Yes. But again, I'll say changing is, people are difficult when it comes to change, even for us, where we are. Think about now with COVID, you know, here, you know, us to wear our mask every time in public, wash our hands, keep distance. So change is hard. Some will take it faster, some will take it slower, but it's a process. Those not supporting change, you can ask them to step aside and ask them separately, what are their issues? We'll do that later as we discuss our reasons to change. Does that help a bit? Is that helping? Thank you, yes. Yeah, but I can see as a HR yes. why you asked, because this is a very big area in HR, yeah? Having everyone on board yes. to support. Yeah, so those are the three key roles of the three sets of employees, and I, I think they all support each other. So they play their roles well enough, then for sure you'll be having a very good time when it comes to change management. All right, now, apart from just the three groups of people, I want to discuss another level of people who are called the change champions or change influencers. Have you heard about those before? Change champions? Or have you had them in your company before, in your change? Team, but, uh, the word is familiar. It's familiar, okay. Yeah. Queen, uh, just hold on, Nancy. Uh, Queen, uh, did you not attend that class we did on role of leaders? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, because we discussed the role of champions in that class. Oh, of, of chain champions. Yes. Okay, so they know it. Leaders well. as champions or, or, or champions or uh, what are they called? uh there's another influencers. one yes influencers yes like change oh. agents yes yes these are key in every company in any change or anything you're doing uh -huh. for we, we'll see why they are 
Now, when you're doing a change process, as you're doing it with every role, you have a role for the frontliners, for the middle managers, and for the others, have a place for change champions. And who are these change champions? These are employees who either volunteer or they are selected by the management to help upgrade the change. Yeah? For example, at the beginning of the quarter model, as you're setting the agency for change, there are those who will buy the change very, very quickly, who just see it and they move with it. And they have the passion and they just want to drive it. Yeah. So if you see those kind of people at that, that early stage, put them down and tell them, look, you want it to help us and be an influencer for the change? We'll let you know what your role is going to be. Or you can ask, can anybody want to volunteer to help us in the change as an influencer? Some will come and say yes. But if you see them at the beginning, put them up and say, we want to, to put you as a change champion, okay? So they're the ones who see things quickly, they buy the vision very, very fast, and they are driven to just go. Now, these ones can be found in every stage of the company. They can be the management team or lower levels or the front level. So as we, wherever they are in the company, as you find them, put them separate aside and have them as your change champions. And they're very, very key because they help you change faster, impact faster, the network around people faster, and because they know that place, they know their colleagues better than you may be, they can help you augment your change process much faster. Now, change champions are not change agents. They are different. A change champion is somebody in the company, either a volunteer or they have been picked by the company. But a change agent is somebody who's been hired or employed, an expert in the change management process, and they are being paid for that. But if you can get Good change champions, you'll find that you won't have to require to be able to have a change agent. That's the difference we have here. Now, you've, uh, for the change champions, if you try to adapt maybe a role model like maybe uh, the, the quarters model or the, or the Lewis model, they have a role to play at every stage and they can be very, very instrumental as you go around from stage one, two to three, or one to eight. Let's see how they're gonna be applied in the first stage, in the freezing stage. These people can be used because they are very, very driven and dedicated. They can help you impact other employees on the agency for change, you know, to drum the drum about why we must change. Sometimes some don't get very, very fast, but they can be used to help the guys down there at their levels, their colleagues, to understand why in their own language, in their own way. So in the increasing place where you're trying to advocate for change, at the very beginning, they can make it faster and easier in their own language, their own style, so use them there, very, very, very key area. In stage two, in the moving or change area, they can build networks among their groupings. You know the groupings they have down there, the peer groupings, mm. the departments in the offices? They can influence, they can inspire, they can even role model this change. And sometimes when they reach clarity, the employees, they can refer to them and ask them, what do they say about this? What do you mean by this? Explain further. And somehow, because they are there together with them, they can use their own networking way of doing it easily as compared to how a leader can do it, as in terms of breaking it down for them as they go around the change. In the third stage, in the refusing stage, where you're now putting everything together as a change, they can work with your, your community that is supposed to be helping you the change, yeah, to reinforce the change, to monitor and see how far the behaviors are coming, and also report to the management on how the behaviors are being formed are we all together? Do we have resistance to change at what levels? And also help your team build. This must be built towards the same, same direction to enforce the change. Sometimes even to educate others at the bottom there, and again here, role model. So these champions are very instrumental. And I want to say here, it's good to have a small reward for them, you know, because it's not their job, they're just volunteering. And because they're very, very well skilled and they have the know-how, you can have a small reward for them, maybe a small bonus or a small anyway, a package, something to motivate them because they're doing something good for you. They're helping you speed up your change process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you find people like this at the beginning of your change, use them. Either call them out or ask volunteers. Yeah. So what is the strength of a change champion? They have four key strengths here. The first strength they have is the peer group support. Because of, because of their peers who know them easily, they trust, they need to trust because they're part of the team. For you who are a colleague in the same department, the same level, you're easy to trust each other because if I trust my colleague who's next to me here and they know what they're doing, I can trust in the system, in the process. So they build trust easily. 
Number two, they have the managerial support, you know. Uh, leaders uh, use, uh, support them because they're the people who are down the bottom that they can bring on the bottom change of heart and they can be used to model and bring feedback back to management from bottom upwards. It's much faster. Compared to bottom, 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 bottom up is much faster because you're able to get at the levels, at the lowest point and bring it faster and they can, they can get feedback from them and also model for them. Thirdly, they have the experience and, they, are, and they, are, well, they, have, they can network easily. They have been there for a long time. They understand the changes, understand the departments and how you stretch as work. And they can be strong communicators and they can network easily. So networking for them here is very, very good because where you can't reach, they can reach. And then lastly, they can influence the culture positively, depending on the culture you have there, you know, the core values you have there, they can impact them positively. For example, you can have a core value like ownership. That can be used because if their ownership culture comes up as influencers, they can impact that on others and say, this is our process, let's own our process and make a change for our own good. So depending on what core values you have in your company, they are Q-sourcing, you can think of what core values can be influenced by the change positively. So question for me, I'll ask you here, do you have some core values at uh, Q-sourcing Rwanda? Do you have any core values that we can discuss? Yes, we do. Your core values, a few of them. Let's discuss them and see where we can uh, influence them. What, what's one of your core values? You can share. We have uh, teamwork. Yes. Integrity. Uh huh. Integrity. Those are two. Yes, 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 yes. Any others? Um, okay. We forgot. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm just looking for a code of God, but you know them. It's not okay. Me. It's okay. Those are five. Let's take a core, like teamwork. Yeah, teamwork as a core value. Yeah. As a, as a change champion, how can they influence teamwork as a value? Yeah, because you said here that the change champions can influence the values. <coughs> How would they influence team work as a, as a value? That's the question again. <laughs> yes, the question here. Yeah. What's the question again? Okay. The last point here I said was that uh, as a change champion, they are able to influence the culture or core values positively as they influence their people, their teams, isn't it, yeah? And we asked you for your team, uh, your core value, and one of them was teamwork. Yes. So I'm asking, how can teamwork be influenced through a change champion? What can they influence positively? Teamwork. Anybody? It, it could be teamwork could be through proper communication. Yes. Uh, a good attitude. Yes. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so that uh, you can influence others when you have a good attitude, like the way you approach things, you can yes. try to influence others. If they see the positivity in yeah. you, maybe it could drive others to take on the art if you're positive and you're self-motivated or even Very proactive well. and maybe well. also through a recognition when someone is recognized others may try also to strive towards achieving that recognition in the future yes, yes you're very right Yes, because you know, as an influencer, a change influencer, it means you care that the team succeeds in the change, isn't it? Eh? Yes. So a core yes. value like, team, yeah, like teamwork, if you say we, are, we, are, we work in teams and we have teamwork with us, it means even in change, we can stand together as a strong team and we can succeed in our team. So the influencer here is trying to foster in that core value positively as teamwork. Eh? 
Yeah, okay. that's one example that I'll say. So look at the core values you have there and see how can our change champions influence our core values positively? Yeah, the saw teamwork or ownership or what you have there. Or even find out, can we bring in any more core values in our change process that can be fostered as we change along? So again, this is gonna help you very much. All right. So any queries so far, we have discussed uh, different roles, change champions, we have discussed other levels of management and uh, frontliners mm -hmm. on the roles of um, every person in the change process. Anything to add before we continue? Is it clear? Is it making sense? Hello? Yeah. Oh. All right. So now I want to show you a video, just one video, in terms of the roles of leadership in change. It's a short video, so I'd like you to pay some attention and make some observation in terms of uh, the leader responds to the change because all this company is going through some change and take a note about what the leader had responded to the change and what they did wrong or how they would have improved it better. So give me some 15 minutes of your time. I'll just share this with you. And I hope you're going to be able to follow through. It's a company you know very well yourself. So assure them. Secondly here, misunderstanding can cause uh, results to change. Sometimes maybe the communication was very, very poorly done, not adequately done, or there was a problem in communication at every level. Some things are not clear to them about why they are changing and what we are changing for, maybe the vision. Sometimes about communication and misunderstandings of communication. Thirdly, it's about tolerance to change. Some people are very, very low in accepting change and some are higher. There are those who accept or try to change very easily and some are very, very slow or they are low in change they're very slow and secure. So having them in place and all understanding where they are is very key. So understand and say these people here are resistant because they're not very, very sure about the change or they're accepting the change very easily. Fourthly, there's people who assessed change differently, you know, opinions, differing opinions. And it's human. Some, some understand it in one direction, some see in a different way and it's agree with each other. So these are the four reasons why people are resistant to change. And as long as you understand these four areas, you can come and say, why are we having this change with some of these people is because of parochial interest or low tolerance of change. These are the four areas why there is this change. Now, there are two types of change results in the company you'll find. The first that's quite common is called systemic results to change. This is where the system resists the change in terms of uh, competence on how it can achieve the change in terms of resources, or in terms of being ready to, to start the change. This can, for example, be there, there's lack of money or, or resources to start the change, or lack of capacity to make the change happen. For example, if you have begun the change uh, using the quarters model, you have begun stage one and freezing, you have come as far as maybe you have done your vision selling very well, and you come to where now you have so the vision, and you empower the employees to act, you cannot because maybe you have no plan for them to be trained, or there's no uh, money aside for them to change, or there's no resources for them to start changing, or there's no equipment. So you do everything very, very well here, and you come here and you can't move on. You get stuck somewhere here. So the first thing here as a leader, you must ensure the system is prepared to go and start changing once you sell the vision. If it lags behind or it's not adequate, it's called systemic resistance to change. That's the first change resistance we have. Number two is behavioral resistance to change. It's about the people here now, where you have negative attitudes or passive attitudes or reactions by individuals in the company at all levels. This can be employees at the front line, managers at the top and the bottom. It can happen at any level here. So here as a leader, you must observe some behaviors that will tell you we have some behavioral People who resist to change, and there are, there are four days of behavior resistance to change. The first one is called this engagement, it's an expectation, it's enchantment, and it's orientation. So I'll go through each behavior that you can observe and see where they are, and I'll start the first one here that's called this engagement behavior. In this behavior here, you'll find people who are not engaged in their roles anymore. You know, they just withdraw, they disengage completely. 
they lack interest. They can be there physically, but not mentally with you. They're absent mentally. So they come to work, they sit at their desk, they do their work very, very well, but they act mechanically. So and how do you know they're disengaged? They always have things like, uh, they say things like, okay, well, no problem, I will do it. What can I do next? So they are not engaged. They're not putting their minds together in the change. So to help them from that behavior, what you can do is have some empathy on them, understand their concern that they are disengaged because maybe there's something they need to understand better about the change. Ask them, is there any problem with the change? Anything you're finding that's not of the change? Anything to qualify? So you review and ask them where they are and why they're not engaged. And they can talk back to you and tell you what they're feeling because if there's something in their minds that maybe they are afraid of the change, afraid of their position, lose their position, and they can help them understand that they are not, that, that their partner's change and they should not be disengaged and how they can get fully engaged. Second behavior here is this identification. This is where somebody does not identify the change at all. They lose themselves. They find the threat to the change. And they look insecure. They sound very, very, you know, unhappy about the change. They want to cling to the past and they love being in the past. They keep saying things like, before I would do things like this. Before the change, I was like this. So they lose their, their mastery for the new position. They feel they have lost their position. So for them to be helped, what you can do as a leader here is maybe um, show them that they are part of the new change. Make them feel secure. Involve them in the change. In their new role, give them some uh, maybe some higher duties on what they can uh, help in the change to feel as they are masters of their own role. Okay. The third behavior here is called disenchantment. It's uh, the most common one you find in many companies. It's about negativity and anger, where they reject the entire change and they don't want to know, they don't want to be part of the change. And they're very vocal about this part of the change. They can even rally people against the change. And they can be contagious in what they are saying, in the attitude as well, in the verbal, what they're saying verbally. And they say some very verbal and angry things like, I don't like this change. I don't want to be here, you know? These guys don't know what they're doing. So the anger is very, very key here. And sometimes you, if you look deeper, you find that their anger is not about the change. It's about something earlier. Other things have been building up and the change was not the last straw that brought them out. If you find this category, it is very, very clear that they're against a change. You bring them out completely and address them separately and ask them what their issues are. So first of all, let them first come down with their anger because they're angry and find out why they're upset. Is it the change? What about the change is annoying them? Are there other underlying reasons why they are becoming resistant to change and becoming so disenchanted? And you'll find that they have other things possibly before the change. So the first thing is let them first come down and then you address them. If you don't do that for this category of behavior, it will be, be it, they'll have another group. They rally a group against the change and they become a bigger group, a bigger force, and it becomes very, very hard for you to be able to address them. So this is very, very common, the behavior, disenchantment, you'll find it in most companies. And then fourthly, is this orientation where somebody is completely ambiguous about the change, they are confused, they feel lost, they don't belong at all. And they ask questions like, um, so what do we do next? What does this mean for me? How are we going to do this? They have a fearful attitude towards the change. So for you to help them address why they feel ambig why they feel insecure. Ask them why are they not sure about themselves, you know? Do you understand your place in the company, the new vision, the new company, where you fit in? Let them feel they're part of the bigger picture. Because to be in this place, this behavior, it means they feel lost. They don't belong anywhere and they are afraid and they are afraid to even engage themselves. So these four behaviors are the ones you need to look out for as a leader, to understand where they are, is it to change and address them as they are. You can find maybe one or two, but observe. And what you can do as a leader, please do not judge, don't judge them. Do not please look at them as rebels, understand they're human beings and they're trying their best to adapt. But as human beings, behavior is what we read as for or against resistance. Any questions so far on the four behaviors and how you can identify? Hello? Hi. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen these behaviors anywhere in your company as you process the change? Uh, yes. Yeah. I think. Which one have you?
have you seen? The four types of behavioral resistance reaction. Yes. Disengagement. Okay. Mm. Disengagement, yeah? Hello? Yes. I can hear you. And um, yeah. Yes, and as you were explaining, I I thought of for a leader in terms of disengagement, they should when you're laying out the plan or the changed plan, you should ensure that just like you said, that the employee is safe, that their work is safe. I, I mean specifically pinpoint what the change is all about and what it will be affecting. So that so that even I, I believe that if the employee knows that their job is safe or understands very well, it also promotes ownership or even participation in that change. Yeah. Yes, you're correct. Unless they engage in the change, they will not be able to perform well, will they? They will fail. Yeah, they yeah. won't. And this behavior comes when they feel insecure about their role. And if you think about your role, you just disengage. You don't want to be there anymore. You just, you, you're like a zombie, you're like a robot. You just do things mechanically because it's a job you're being paid. And okay. that's not a very good behavior to have. Uh, Nancy. Yes. If I can, if I can ask a question. Um, well, would you categorize a situation yes. where a situation yeah. is, a situation, ha a change has come in and the leader has clearly, uh, probably the, the change is beneficial to all the staff, to the team. Yeah. And uh, the leader has clearly, I mean, explained what's expected of us, what's happening. But then you have uh, part of the team or part of the staff who are not, you know, who feel like, who think that it's not, it doesn't concern them. You see that the participation of the team is half half. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, in well, other words, yeah. So in other words, they're either disengaged or they're not disoriented. Most likely, those the last was number one and number four. Mm -hmm. Are they vocal about it? Are they loud? Are they angry? Is there anger in their behavior? No, 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 no. It's just that they are not, they are negligent. You know, they are, they, they, they are like, okay, this does not concern me. Let me keep doing my work. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see their participation. It's not that they are resisting. It's just that they are not giving it value. That's disengagement. Yes. It's very common. I can hear what you're saying. Either, as I was saying earlier, this behavior is where they don't feel that they are physically present but mentally absent. They are applying themselves there. Mm -hmm. So it means they have not understood why the change is good for them and what their role is mm -hmm. in this change. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will not explain to them what their role is and what they should do or how their role will change or benefit the change. So they have to be, go back and say, if you're, let's say you're, a, you're an accountant, maybe, let's say on your finance department, yeah? And we are changing ICT. So we are going to change your portfolio in the ICT to be this. So the, unless they appreciate that new role or that new thing they'll be doing and see the big picture of how that role will change and make it better, mm -hmm. then they'll stay in the statement. It's about understanding. Okay where they are and what is the benefit of this change for them, for that role. Or maybe they are very, very far in understanding the vision of the change. One of those two. Okay. Yeah? You may have to go back and just explain or ask, ask them, what are you feeling? What is, your, what is your concern? So more of asking them, you know, hearing from them in every behavior, ask them where they are, what they feel, and you learn about where they are to behave that they're behaving in these four areas, then you can address. But most is about understanding the role. Because before they were playing the role very well, isn't it? And something has changed. Yes. So mm -hmm. they feel they're threatened or not in any place, not sure what they're doing. 
is adding value. Yeah. Okay. But you see, there, there are different people with different behaviors. So you have to observe everybody, not just a group, but even people. And you'll see them. Yeah. So for you, you have to be very, very empathetic and very, very patient. Yeah. yeah. And don't uh, be, be cruel to them. Because unless you have them, by in the change, you will not succeed. It may require more time for some people. It may require more time for some champions to come and help you also. Yeah. To help them come to the same level. Yeah. Any more yes, comments? I a, yes, I have a question. Yes. In all these uh, types of resistance to change? Yes. Uh, we found there's a lot of reasons behind the resistance. Yes. But I, I've seen several changes where I find some people, everything is done to them as much as the ones who initiate the change can. They try to do the best. But you find yes. sometimes yeah. they change, they are not totally fitting the change. So sometimes you find, though it's not bad, it's not good, but it ends up rejecting the change, rejects them. You find that they have no room to fit in. At the end, they end up not fitting in the chain. What do you say about that? Because I have seen it happening in several changes. Okay. Is it because they are resisting or the system, the system has, has not has no place for them? I mean, it ends up because of that, maybe it might be they are not, they are less concerned, they they, they are not, they, they are not feeling motivated of the change. Others okay. just resisting, different reasons, but you find all means everything is done to make yeah. them fit, but they end up not fitting it. Do you, do you okay. think is that a failure of leadership or some cases it happens? It can happen. Mm. So you have done all you can as a leader to clarify their thoughts, they've asked their questions, you have tried to remedy them, you have given them time, and they're not changing. Those ones, you may have to let them go, and it's, it's okay to let them go because it means there'll be a barrier to your change. There'll be a barrier, and they can infect others to resist change just because they want to resist change. It's okay to say, we have done everything. What else can we do for you? We have trained you. We have coached you. We have had you. Is there anything else we can do for you? Nothing else. So it means they have just not accepted completely. And it's sad because it affects them. They have no place in the company anymore. They can't see themselves in a new vision. It happens, and I've seen comments saying, fine, we have done everything else. We have offered you everything. We have trained you, but sorry, we can't have you here. We have to move on with those who are on board with us. It comes to that. It must come to that sometimes. You must be bold enough and say, enough is enough. End of the road for you. Yes. Yeah, and don't be afraid. Even HR, you know they're such guys. They just want to resist. They don't want to change. And they're not very many, there are a few of them. Eh? Mm. But those few can, can infect others to rebel and be a barrier. Mm. Did I answer you correctly? Yes. Yeah? Yes. So observe the behaviors and deal with them. And you find that, as I was saying, and if somebody is not changing and they have not adapted the change completely, then you can say goodbye to them. Don't fear. All right. Now we normally say it's either you change or change changes you. You know. Yes. <laughs> so yes. When you refuse Some to change, then the change changes you. Yeah. It's and, and, you, and, and you see, when it comes to change, it's not just for that one person. Eh? You're carrying an entire organization. Sure. There are people that you're spending money, and a few guys want to be coming uh, difficult for you. Just remove them and replace them. And it's their loss. Yeah? True. Uh, Axel, you wanted to say something? No, I'm okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, so once you have done that, we can do a summary of how you can uh, overcome business to change in just two categories. Eh? So you have done your behavior check. You have done all you can. You have seen how you can remedy each behavior. There are two ways of overcoming to change. The first one is people-oriented action. You have to do the people. Okay. So I'll say here, demonstrate that you're committed to the change. Yeah. 
So you as a leader, you're trying to show that you, as a forerunner in this stage, you're committed and you're there to run through it, complete to the end. You have put money aside, resources, and you care for them. And you want them to be as highly as you are committed. So you must show that your desire for change is number one. Yeah. Secondly, you must use very, very clear systems, communicate about the change, update, feedback, all that, and leave no room for non-communication. You can do you can do on uh, maybe on notice boards, you can do meetings, you can do emails, mm -hmm. you can do mm -hmm. briefings, communicate throughout. So anyone has any doubt about the change, they will not say I was not told or I didn't hear or I never understood. So continuously clear ambiguity and ensure they understand very, very well. And fourthly, ensure that the change efforts are adequately staffed and funded. So if enough staffing for the change, there is no gap remaining in staffing or in skill or in funding. So ensure that people are well funded, they're well trained and they're well placed in where they should be. Number five, adequately prepare for any adjustments, be flexible. If you had planned to have five people, for example, in a department and you find that you require actually seven people because on the ground, it looks like you require more people, be flexible, add more people. If you had said you'll have five trainings or one training or two trainings in this area, and as you have done, you find you require just one more training in HR issues. So be very, very open and be flexible as you mm -hmm. adapt the people change. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, training and coaching, yeah, and guide as, as needed continuously. So here with people, you're trying to be showing that you're trying to make them to stay on course, that nobody lacks anything. They don't lack training or coaching or funding or communication, that they are being taken through the change with them in mind, that nothing lacks about people. And lastly, here is about task action, okay? About things, about tasks, about the work. So get a team of supporters for change, like champions and influencers, put them in place, who can go on the ground and influence that change in terms of tasks and roles and duties. Then also align the structures with the new strategy, okay? If you had a structure that had about five people at the top there, and the new change requires three people, you can put them together in one department. Change your, your structure the way it should work. If you have five SOPs in different companies, in different structures, different uh, departments, you can make them two, streamline them to fit the new change. Yeah, look at the structures, how you do things, procedures, processes. Have effective working teams, make them cohesive, make them a team. Build teams around the roles, the tasks they do. So they can work together and support each other that no one is left behind. So tasks can run at the same, same level, the same, same speed, that no task is left behind. Because if someone is left behind one task, it means there is no cohesion. There is no, there are different levels. And also recruit and fill up vacant positions with competent and supporters of change. If you're recruiting people in the system, in the new roles, make sure they're supporters of change and they're competent and they can run with the change very quickly. So tell them, we are putting you in this position because we're having a change in our company. Can you adapt? If you're not able to adapt, please let us early enough because we require to start this job quickly, we'll train you quickly and adapt quickly. And then lastly, so have committees and coalitions that are, that are accountable to you, that are not able, that can give you feedback quickly, that are running with the program, that don't lag behind, that are together with you in every area, that are supporting every department, every role, and they can report back the changes and the feedback. And also motivate again, have a motivation scheme in your HR department or in your department area. Motivate those who have done well. So you can show that this change is working very well. Those who are doing well can be rewarded. And those who are still behind can see it is possible to change. You can do your role well, you get a reward. So this change is working for us. Mm -hmm. So those are the basic areas you can actually try and divide and say these people or it is action and task and actions. Any question? And the two summaries? <laughs> Uh, okay.
you it's, very, it's very clear. Okay, good. So I think I've come to the end of my discussion today and I'll end by just giving you the effect of poor change management because um, if, if your change management has not been done very well, there's some negative effects. And the first one I'll say is financial loss. Yeah, because every change requires finances. You have a budget you have put in place. You spend money on people, you spend money on maybe the structure, on technology, on equipment, maybe a new branch. Uh -huh. If you don't run your managing change very well, you will lose money. It becomes worthless after all that. All right? It also reduces your performance levels. So you plan to do a different kind of change. It will reduce how well you have performed at the end of every period. You have low performance, productivity levels. It can also create a decline in the quality of work. The poor outcomes that come because of low employee input, for example, not engaged very well, you have low outcomes, poor outcomes, poor customer service per preserve sometimes, and it becomes inadequate to help customers sometimes. Fourthly, you have lost time and resources, of course, the time you have spent training people, the time you have spent trying to change, the time you have spent with people in meetings and engaging and coaching and all that, it comes wasted. And once you waste a lot of time on that, time cannot be recaptured. It also leads to reduce staff retention because there are staff people who are trying to make the change work, but because it has not been done very, very well, it's poorly managed, they end up leaving and going away. They start, start losing faith in the change process. You also have low employee motivation. They're not, the morale has gone low because they're not seeing it working. It's not very, very well managed. So they have no morale to even try a next time. And also you miss a chance to change, yeah? You have a very good chance to change, but because of poor management of change, mm -hmm. you have not uh, allowed yourself to maximize on it. So you lose the chance to change. And also it uh, also negatively impacts on leadership style on how you lead as a change manager. And there's more, there's a bigger list. There are many negative effects of poor change management. So try and avoid falling into any of these and think about how you're managing your change. Is it well-planned? Is there a good model? And that's the end of our discussion okay. this last two days. And I'll leave it with a, a quote by Barack Obama, who said that change will not come if we wait for someone, other person to come and change at the time. They're the ones we're waiting for, they're the change that we seek to see. So I'll tell you as Q sourcing Rwanda, you are the change you're asking for, you're the ones who change. Do not wait for someone to come and help you change. Yeah. So thank you for your attention. I'll open now for questions, maybe. Um, or clarify something you didn't understand very well. So thank you for your time. Awesome. I uh, thank you so much, Nancy, for that. Uh, very yeah. informative, very articulate. I really liked it. I don't know what the team in uh, Kigali thinks. All of them are yeah. standing. You're already tired. They want to go. <laughs> they want to go. They're tired. It's six o'clock. Yes. What do you think, guys? You are muted. You are muted, yeah. Yes. Uh, I think this, uh, the, the training came at the right time, as like uh, uh, my colleague Lydia had said, we are going through a change for, with ISO. Yes. And it's quite. <coughs> We, ha we had like, um, like a representative who was like making sure to see where we stand, what are the documents, how is our documentation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now that we still we have a long way of things to do and it kind of, I think personally for me, it kind of brought some fear. Yes. Because, um, I mean, uh, it's a new territory. And the way you have to start documenting, following the guidelines. Uh -huh. we, 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 we appreciate the change, but again, personally, the way you be, you have to now adapt to the work. You know, we are used to do some uh -huh. Short, short uh, uh, note to understand that there is, there is that standard 
way you want to go again. Yes. Remind us that we need to change because even ourselves, as we go into a stage of life, so it's to embrace it and work together as a team, make it work. And I know that we will. So I just, my comment is just appreciating the timing of the training. Awesome. Uh, uh, thank you so much great. for that. Uh, uh, just, mm -hmm. just. I, this is John speaking. Yes, John. You, I, it's like a question. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's coming up to everything, but it's kind of a question. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen the change is something that, that is intentional, but uh, the way we have just gone through the subjects, like something that has steps and systematic way, uh -huh. uh, where everything. But my question is: you know, most of the companies, there are some changes that you find they have, they come sometimes. They you find it already happened without even being aware. I, I can't hear. Uh, I think we lost you for a second there. We've lost here. I mean, my changes that are not big that changes a lot in the company. My is, is this, uh, the, everything is kind of documented in this systematic way as we've started. Oh, it's just that you have to put all this in mind, but the change just goes as uh, the work is being done, but we always in mind. That's my question. I don't know if it's clear. Uh, Nancy, have you gotten um, the question? Uh, what I had was, uh, it must change always be uh, systematic. Planned, systematic the way we have gone. Yes. Is what you want to ask here? Yeah? Yes. Okay. That, that, as we said earlier, change can happen in any environment. It can be the internal environment in the company or in the industry. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, those two, you have a lot of control, and that happens every time. Changes happen every time, maybe with competition, with pricing. Those you can do without much structure because you're in control. But the kind of change you're discussing in the last two days is about the external environment where you have less control and other factors are controlling you. So it's good to have a systematic way of approaching it to guarantee some success levels. Yeah? Is it clear? Yeah, it is. Because, like, like for example, like you're having a change to do with maybe a structure or a CU has come in. Those are internal, and you can do them within your own structure, isn't it? Eh? Yes. Or maybe a pricing structure in the, in the in the sector, your own sector in consulting. Those you do because you know the sector very well. You understand the dynamics. Those can be done without much structuring. But what we have been going through are the external factors that can be very very detrimental to your company that requires some structure, require a model, you know, require some more time to try and uh, gain some success. Yes, uh, I also want to think like how we react to change also might need to be a bit more systematic so yes. that you're able to get the a very defined end result. You know, I don't think it will be wise to start at level two if you've not covered level one or you start at level three and, and miss uh, the other steps behind. So maybe how we react to change is what needs to be very systematic. But as, and also we, we also need to be very agile, like just go with the change, you know, because you can do step one to eight, then you find a new thing. Like just being in an acceptable state that this change is there because most of the time, change is very long term. Once you're done with one cycle, another thing starts, another thing mm -hmm. starts. So it's just the need to be more agile and very adaptable to change. I'll also add by saying that uh, I was sharing models that have been used before in business mm -hmm. that have worked before. Um, you can choose any other model. There are other models you can choose that apply to your company. Maybe so sometimes you can find that ADCA applies for your company. Or maybe you want to just have the Lewin's model, the three stages, as long as it works for you and you're following through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The video we just watched earlier on the Yahoo, 
there was no structure, there was no system, they had no plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were caught, there was a change in the air happening, and there was no guide, there was no direction. So having a direction is better than having no direction or having any structure at all. So have something in place. Yes. It can be an ATCA model, it can be any other, but have a way of having to know where are we? What can we do? What's our step? What have we missed to guide you? It's a guide. Yeah? Yeah. And I hope they can apply, they can help you. Sure. Because change, change happens in different levels. Some are bigger changes, some are smaller changes. So find a way of adapting with a structure. But don't find yourself with no system at all. It will be very dangerous. Sure. Yeah. Mm. Uh, any other reaction yeah. from the team? All right, why did we lose Patrick? From what Finn said. Sure. All right. I, I had to do something quickly in the office. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for attending. I, I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Is that okay with you? Hello? Yes. Yes. All right. See you tomorrow. Have a great evening and uh, God bless you all. Yes. Thank you for being here with me. Yes. Thank you, Nancy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All, all the best in your other training. Yeah. For sure. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye.